Be Holy. Be Holy is a broadcast ministry of believers dedicated to saving the souls of all men and women. We teach the words of God that people all over the world may hear the voice of God and obey Him. God doesn't want to show us His wrath or His anger. He just wants us to repent and be holy. And after one repents, he or she can be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. But certainly not before they repent. Listen, we really can't even discuss prayer until one repents. Yes, hell is making its way towards the unrepentant heart. But it is Be Holy's commandment and mission to warn everybody. Not to control, to warn. The Word of God is spirit and it's life. That's why we take the Word of God seriously. We're not using shameful deeds and underhanded methods. We're not trying to trick anyone or or change the word of God. We tell the truth before God and all those who are honest and live by truth. They know the truth. They realize that we are telling the truth. Listen, friend, we've been preaching and teaching for over 20 plus years and the Lord Jesus is satisfied with our efforts and we want to keep it that way. Next on Be Holy. We are going to talk about the light and walking therein. Be Holy. All right. We want to welcome everybody back to Be Holy. We're glad that you're here with us. Glad that you're here with us. Listen, we got a great reading today. We're going to go over to Psalm 27. We're going to start at verse number one. Psalm 27, verse number one. But before we do that, go on over to podbean.com and download the broadcast and share them. Go over to Spotify and put us in your playlist. (laughs) We're everywhere. Listen, we're going to start at verse number one. Uh, Psalm 27, verse number one. This is a Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. No one else is my light and no one else is my salvation. Only God is the one who gives me the light that I need to see the path I need to walk on. And the one who saves me in the midst of darkness, that's him, the Lord. So why should I be afraid? If the Lord is protecting me and helping me, why am I afraid? If the Lord is afraid, then we should be afraid. But if the Lord is not afraid, he has commanded us to be (laughs) Be strong. That's what he told us to do. Be strong. So this is what we're this is what we're reading. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Why should I be afraid? Period. Why should I be afraid or a question mark, whatever you want to call it. But it's why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger. Ain't that what I just told you? And so why should I tremble? If he's my protection, who can actually get a hold of me? Who can actually hinder me? Who can actually stop me? If he's the one doing the protecting and he's the one that's guiding. Psalm 27, verse number two. When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. When they come to attack you, if God is your light and God is your protection, they will stumble and fall. And for now, actually, we're talking about Jesus Christ here. Every, every, every last bit of this is talking about Jesus Christ. But because we're believers, we believe in the same God he promoted. It's talking about us, too. So when evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. They will come to devour you. They will come to attack you, but they will stumble and fall. Verse number three, though a mighty army surrounds me. They surrounded Jesus, didn't they? (laughs) On more than one occasion, they tried to get him out of here. They tried to kill him, but it wasn't time yet and they couldn't do anything. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. No matter who's around you, no matter how many people are around you, how many, how, no matter how many people oppose you, do not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. So even though he's protected you, even though he's leading, even though they may stumble, stumble and fall, if they do attack you, still remain confident. Remain confident. God needs his people to remain confident. Verse number four, one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I ask most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The house of the Lord is the house of prayer. 
That's the house of the Lord. That's the house of the Lord, not a actual church, but the house of prayer, meaning uh, you. Everything that makes a building is actually in you, you know, because we come from the ground also, you know. So our prayer puts us in the house of the Lord. The Lord has a house and his house is a house of prayer. And so when we pray, we get results. We get results. Uh, let's see it. Read it again. Uh, one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections, not your perfections, not my perfections, but the Lord's perfections. He's perfect in everything. You know, we can read the Bible and, and have Bible studies and have someone prophesy and, and teach us things about. Uh, what's written in the Bible. We can go and study what words mean this and what words mean that, 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 that really doesn't help you. It's all about God giving you the, in, the, the insight and the knowledge. It's all about him giving you the knowledge and it's, and the knowledge is always coming to us concerning his perfections and what he expects of us. And even if we did, even if we were perfect and did everything right and did everything uh, the way it was written, if we did everything right, it would still be dirty rags righteousness. It still wouldn't be good enough. But because God forgives us and he protects us and he gives us the light and he's the one that protects us against the evil one and the evil ones, we're protected. We're, we, 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 uh, even though our perfection is dirty rags, he still accepts us. Yeah, you understand. You understand. We don't, we don't receive God so that we can be, uh, perfect 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 we we grab hold of god so that we uh will be saved and have salvation that we will not be uh all of our sins won't be held against us in the coming day because there is coming a day when god's going to judge everybody uh on their sins but see the way to the way around that the way around getting uh, judged by God is to actually accept them before that day and to do what he asked you to do to the best of your abilities and ask him to help you because he's our help. No one else is our help. You know, uh, uh, the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple, in his temple, not our own temple, his temple, for he will conceal me when trouble comes. He will conceal me where in the temple when trouble comes with prayer. He will conceal me. He will. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of the reach on a high rock. He will place me out of reach. That's what he does to us. Right when your enemy think he has you or she has you. They stumble and fall. They can never reach you. They might do a little something to hurt your feelings, but they can't really hurt you, hurt you, because God is the one who can actually hurt anybody. Sure, you know, people die every day, but even past this body, God will call us back to life and call us right to be with him. That's what he does. He doesn't care about bodies. His word don't check with the body to see if the body's all right. His word tells the spirit to go back to the body and raises the body, judges the body and takes the spirit along with him. He does all of that. He has all the power and nothing can stop him. And so if nothing can stop him and he's helping you, nothing can stop you either. Then I will hold my head up high above my enemies who surround me at his sanctuary i will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy singing and praising the lord with music that's what we'll do that's what we'll do i will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me at his sanctuary i will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy singing and praising the lord with music hear me as i pray O lord be merciful unto me be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come talk with me. I told you God's place is all about prayer. If my people who are called by my name 
would humble themselves and pray, they would they would see a whole lot of change. You're not going to vote the change you need in. You got to sit down and pray. You got to actually talk to the Lord. He says, come talk with me. That's what he says. Come talk with me. My heart responds, Lord, I am coming. How many of you have heard the Lord talk to you and you responded with, Lord, I am on my way. I will be right there. And matter of fact, you don't have to go anywhere. You just stop what you're doing, get someplace and pray. You can get to the church and that's great with the stained glass and the Bibles and the hymnals and the organs there and uh, the ushers are there and the preachers there. That's good. That's fine. But when you can't do all of that, when you don't have time to get over to the church and open up the door, you just turn someplace and start praying and you will automatically be in the house. What was Jesus doing before they crucified him? They were praying, weren't they? Well, he was praying. The rest of them kind of kind of got tired and gave up. But listen, he was in prayer. That's the one thing that a lot of us actually forget about. We forget about prayer. And a lot of times it's hard to remember prayer when you're in the throes of stress and strain and attacks and everything else. But remember, if anybody attacks you, all it takes is a minute. <laughs> and you, matter of fact, it don't take that. You can pray while they're attacking you and watch God work. Watch God work work. My heart has heard you say, come talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant and anger. You have always been my helper. And that's what I always tell people, regardless of what you think, you know, God is your only helper. Nobody else can help you. Only God can help us. Only God can help us. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me. Oh, God of my Sal. Even if my father and my mother abandoned me, Lord, hold me close. He will hold me close even if my father and mother abandoned me. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands for they accuse me of things I have never done. With every breath they breathe, they threaten me with violence. We see a whole lot of that. Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am in the land of the living. Meaning you don't have to wait until you die to see the goodness of the Lord. You can see the goodness of the Lord right now. You can see his goodness and what he does for you and and leading you and helping you right now. You don't have to wait until uh, we die to see him in the spirit. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. That's who we're supposed to be waiting on. And if we don't wait on him, nobody else is coming. I can tell you that right now. And we're out of time. Listen, don't ever give up. Don't ever throw in the towel. Believe God. Thanks for listening to Be Holy with your host, Leonardo Butler. Join the discussion on Facebook at Be Holy Broadcast. Our Be Holy podcast is at Podbean or contact us at beholy116 at gmail.com or 614-268-7757. Thanks for listening to Be Holy with your host, Leonardo Butler. Tune in next week. Be Holy.